Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me uh, for my talk. And today we'll be talking uh, about how we can move from idea and prototype to production solution, uh, like some framework, how we can approach this uh, process. So a few words about myself. Like my name is Ross, I'm from Poland, and I work uh, for Software One company, and it's a big consultancy company, and we are serving clients uh, from more than 90 countries across different domains. And this framework would be somehow the compressed experience which we gathered uh, through implementing the project for uh, other clients. Uh, since I'm data science architect, for me it's very important to have some systematic approach how we can get things done so that we are not reinventing the wheel from the scratch as well as we are not wasting uh, time on looking for some solution. Yeah? So uh, about my experience, uh, I have uh, seven years of experience in AI and also for more than four years now, I'm contributing to community by conducting uh, workshops, trainings, participating in the conference, and trying to share my knowledge and also passion to, uh, to AI. And also uh, now is the era not only for AI, but for the cloud as well. So I'm certified in mainly in Azure, and because it helps us to accelerate uh, our journey uh, and journey uh, in AI for our customers. So let's have a look at the agenda, what we are going to discuss. So firstly, we'll consider what is the typical AI project life cycle, and it's like the framework itself, because regardless of the type of AI prob uh, problems we are trying to solve, uh, all of them are going through the same repetitive steps, more or less. And uh, not to keep this presentation purely theoretical, uh, we'll try to formulate some use case, some problem, so that we can embed our problem into uh, this. Uh, we will try to embed our framework into this problem. And then step by step, we will analyze each step of this framework and like what types of questions should we ask uh, as you remember, yesterday we had a great presentation when it was stated that asking proper questions might be sometimes more important than getting answers. So this is basically about asking qu proper questions and thinking how we can respond to them. So the overview and the general idea of the framework is like this. It consists of uh, four steps. And again, it does not depend on the what we are trying to solve, if it is related somehow to AI, it should work, right? It can be supervised, unsupervised, Gen AI, uh, and so on. So the first uh, step is scoping, and we need to understand whether we need AI at all. Because uh, sometimes it's, you know, not so obvious, and we need to uh, ask proper question if this is the only tool and the best one. Um, for sure now, uh, AI revolution or evolution is going on and everyone would like to use this. And quite often we face the problem that our approach is tool driven, not problem driven. So rather than analyzing what type of problem we have, we are trying, uh, you know, we have Gen AI, we have ChatGPT, let's do something. And it does not always work. Uh, we'll have dedicated slides for this a little bit later. The next phase is for sure data, because no data, no AI, end of story, right? Uh, and here in the data we can uh, see like two sub steps which we should pay attention to. The first we need to think whether we at all have data and what are our data and what is the baseline for our model. Uh, is this worth investing our mm, efforts in doing something like this? And the next uh, question is if our problem is of supervised type, then uh, we need to have it labeled, right? 
uh, quite often we don't have it labeled and this process is very time consuming and we need to take this into consideration while planning the project. Uh, after we are done with data, like we are, we are aware that we have some data, we need to have it labeled and so on, we proceed to modeling and here the biggest challenge is firstly to select what type of models we need to have because as you know we have a lot of different algorithms, a lot of different types of machine learning and when this model is selected we need to perform error analysis and understand why it fails, you know, every model fails. Uh, and as you, you can see this error, it means that during the modeling, we can detect that we missed something. Our model does not cover all the domain we are trying to solve, and maybe there is need uh, for adding more data, looking for new data sources, and this is the step when we can go back and reach our data somehow and then proceed to modeling as well. When we are done with the modeling, then we would like to have this model running not only on my laptop, but make it somehow available to everyone, like to my customers. So we are thinking about deployment, which is basically moving uh, my model to some environment, to some server, somewhere on the cloud, for example, or on premises, and make it work. But when we deploy it and uh, it can handle our customer's request, it's not end of story. Uh, actually, it's the very beginning. Uh, it's uh, because we need to monitor and maintain the system. It's, this system is like alive and we need to react what's going on with this. Now let's uh, try to formulate some basic problem so that when we will be analyzing each of these steps, like scoping data, modeling, and deployment, uh, in some questions I'll be referring to this case so that you know answers are more or less embedded into some concrete case, not just very abstract. So let's imagine that uh, we are a big financial institution. We have some banks. There are a lot of banks. We have a lot of competitors, and everyone wants to grab all money, right? So we need to make something better. And we believe that uh, our customer experience is uh, something that uh, sets us apart. So we care much about customer experience, but w as one statistician told, we, we, we cannot control something if we cannot measure it. So in order to make sure that our customer experience is okay, we would like to monitor this process somehow. So uh, let's imagine that uh, at the moment, we are already serving our clients, right? We have call center, many people are calling to us, usually they have some problems, sometimes they maybe just want to say thank you, which is helpful. And so how we are testing the solutions right now? So there are some leaders uh, which are overseeing a call center and they randomly pick some recordings, they just listen to them, and see whether it was okay. But as you can imagine, this approach uh, is not scalable at all. So that uh, we would like to change something. We don't know yet if we need AI, maybe yes, but we will think. So, but what we have based on what we would like to introduce this process. So we have a lot of historical recordings, audio files with many conversations. And we know that you know, we would like to have some feedback at least uh, once per week. We don't need to know immediately that my employee was angry while having this conversation with the customer. So having this weekly at the very beginning is uh, good enough. Maybe later we can think on how we can uh, detect some bad behavior immediately. But at the moment, business re uh, expectation is to have this with this regularity. So now let's uh, consider the first uh, phase of this framework, which is scoping. And uh, we will relate this to our problem, as I told before. And what I really like uh, during this uh, step is so-called hammer test. And this test is uh, when I have a hammer, everything else looks like a nail. And you know I'm trying to hit and solve every problem 
with the same tool, uh, which is not always the case, and it's not working properly all the time, right? So, <coughs> first of all, uh, I need to understand what is my problem and what is the main business goal. So, definitely, uh, my goal is not using AI. My problem is to uh, improve customer experience. Now I need to think, okay, I need to improve customer experience. Do I really need machine learning or, or AI? Maybe there are some rule-based approaches where we can uh, somehow solve this problem. And these solutions, which are not AI-based, they are deterministic, so we don't need to fight with randomness. And it's perfectly fine. When we think a little bit more, we'll see it, since we have recordings, we need, uh, for example, do transcription. We would like to turn this audio file into text. And then after that, we maybe would like to receive some useful information from this text. Let's say we would like to know how happy are my customers, like sentiment analysis. Or, for example, we would like to do, I don't know, topic modeling. Okay, my cu customers are claiming, but what exactly they care about? Or maybe re retrieving some keywords. Or, for example, it would be even useful for each conversation have a short summary, like two, three sentences, and understand uh, what was the conversation about. Or we can create many different aspects, what exactly we would like to know about the exact conversation and maybe about how we can aggregate this later all together. So, okay, we already know more or less that we want to transcribe. We have some, something related to NLP now. Which type of machine learning should you choose? Like the first uh, aspect here is to remember that uh, more than one model can be needed to solve my process to solve my problem. So it is not one-to-one -one that, okay, I have one problem, then one model is okay. It can be a combination of, of, of many models. Uh, which type of machine learning should you choose? Here we need to think, uh, do I need some supervised or unsupervised model? Because depending on this, uh, I, I will need to think about my data. Then again, okay, I know what type of models I want to have. I have some data, but okay, can I do this? Um, so do I have competencies? Are my people properly trained to do this? Even if so, then, okay, running models, for example, large language models, we need GPU, right? And if we don't have big server room with tons of GPUs, then it's a problem. For sure, we can solve this using uh, cloud, but still, we need to take this into consideration because it, it means that we need to hire proper people, uh, we need to pay for cloud. All these uh, constraints make us somehow to think how we are going to implement it. Another very important question is how will I measure success? How do I know that what I'm doing makes sense at all? And a very big misconception can be when we try to measure this immediately with accuracy. You know, accuracy F1 score, or blue, or rouge, or anything. I think it's completely wrong, because here we are talking about measuring success of our business. AI should serve the business, not vice versa. So here we need to think about some specific metric, how we will monitor that actually our customer experience is improving over time. You know, from perspective of our business, we don't care whether accuracy is 100% or 95. We care about doing our job properly, making money, and growing our business. Then, when creating the solution, it can be standalone solution, or it can be integrated with something. So, if it is integrated with, with something, there are a lot of potential uh, so-called uh, integration hell. When we are trying to integrate, everything will fail. So we need to think whether we can do this and whether we have proper people to maintain us with this process. And the last question, uh, do I need answer immediately or I can wait a while? So as we decided during the requirements uh, solicitation phase, we would like at the moment to know this at least once per week. For me, it's okay for now. It's still better than 
you know, randomly picking some audio files and listening. Okay, so we have this list of questions. Uh, please be informed that it's not exhaustive, right? It is quite generic, which the most probably works for any type of AI projects, but depending on the specific type, what you are trying to solve, you can add more questions. So it is like some high-level concept map, what we decided. So we have some call center, we have recordings, we need to have some process. And finally, you know, our management cares about some nice dashboard, which is user-friendly, easy to understand. But what this process means, so a little bit technical details. We would like to have one or more models at the moment we don't know yet. And this model should do a few things at least. It should do transcription, so it is audio to text. We need to do some summarization. We would like to do uh, name entity recognition, like keywords extraction, so to understand the topic. And we would like to understand sentiment. At the moment, let's say it's enough for us to, to have positive, neutral, negative, but it's possible to analyze emotions, sad, angry, excited, and different things. And all this process, it should be some, let's say, job solution, which it runs once per week. Uh, data goes to some database, and then finally we can have some dashboard where management can analyze and see what, what is that. Now about data. So data is uh, crucial. So we need to think where my data is located. For example, if it is on-premises, but we, we would like to go in cloud, then ingestion is important, right? So what is my data? What the different formats? Because again, here we have some dedicated tools, technologies, and people. Uh, what are the quality and volume requirements for the data? Uh, let's say for training LLM from the scratch, I need a lot of data, but if I want to just fine tune for some specific case, I need a little less, right? So this is important to know. Then quality. Okay, I have some data, but do they reflect the reality I'm, I'm going to model? Then, okay, is data labeled? And in general, do I need to have my data labeled? So for example, I would like to have some summaries. Yeah? So theoretically, if you would like to train my model from the scratch, I need to have full text, summary, and summaries are the labels, and then I can train the model. But maybe I can avoid this space, yeah? So if I don't need to have my data labeled, it's great, because labeling, it takes much time. And okay, world is changing, so uh, data, they describe the world, so data are changing as well. So how often will they change? Because I need to build some data pipelines to reflect all these changes. Now, if you think about modeling, we decided that we, we would like to do some uh, audio transcription, summarization, sentiment analysis, and other different things. So which algorithm should I choose? So depending on the problem, I, need, I can choose uh, different algorithms like supervised, unsupervised, but we can uh, ask another question. Maybe my problem, my, maybe my problem is not so unique, and maybe someone already solved something similar. So, has anyone trained a similar model? Uh, the most probably yes. And we have something called uh, transfer learning. It means that when we can take the base models and just adjust to our needs, not training from the scratch. In this case, we we need to have little data, or it, we can. Uh, go even better and use some pre-trained, ready-to-use models in, in cloud. Yeah? So for example, in Azure, you can have AI services where uh, you don't need any data and you can th consume this just using REST API, so you don't even need to be any AI expert, just developers who can send HTTP requests can easily consume this. Now, when we are talking about LLMs, so, okay, general chat GPT is not working fine for me, then, okay, how can I improve? I can do fine tuning, but I can do rough. Yes, so typically fine tuning is more complex, it's more expensive, so rough architecture is the way to go for majority of the cases. Then again, about ethical consideration, if I'm using uh, 
if I'm creating client-facing application and my model can offend somehow my customers, then definitely I need to take this into consideration. In our case, it's like, as it's just for showing dashboard for our, for our boss, so ethical considerations are still important, but not as crucial as it would be for external, uh, external clients. Then, okay, when we will be modeling, we will have tons of different experiments, models, and data, yeah? So how we can manage all of this? And also, there are some dedicated tools, like MLflow, for example, it's open source, but um, any cloud provider has its dedicated tools, how you can uh, manage models, uh, versioning your data, and keep order with all of this. And then finally, we decided to use, uh, for some specific cases, uh, ready to use AI services from the cloud, for some cases, transfer learning, so we avoid the problem of labeling data, so we are not wasting our time. Everything works fine, and now we want to deploy this. So the question, where should I deploy? There are basically three options. We can deploy to cloud, we can deploy on-premises, or we can deploy to edge devices, to our phones, for example. So I personally opt for cloud as a default option. So to deploy in other environments, you need to have some uh, consideration and some justification. And for example, justification for deploying the model on-premises can be, I have a big server room already, so I don't need to buy servers, but I already have them. And also it can be a compliance matter. So for example, some banking institutions, they don't allow to preserve their data in uh, cloud. They would like to have everything on premises. So our models should also be there. Then we decided that we would like to use batch solutions. So it will be triggered once per week at the moment. But hypothetically, it can be real time processing. So depending whether it is batch or real time processing, different solutions can be implemented. Yeah, for batch solution, we have some, I don't know, clusters, but for real-time processing, we need to handle Kubernetes and so on. Then I need to think about speed of my model because, for example, my model can be very cool and accurate, but response takes two minutes. And maybe no one wants to wait two minutes, but rather one, two seconds. So there is something called pruning where you can make your model a little bit smaller. So it is smaller uh, and it works uh, like its accuracy is a little bit lower, but this is my price for the speed. Yeah, I can also consider this. Also, I need to think about different solutions. How can I monitor and what exactly I can monitor? There are numerous different metrics, and you know, if we will be monitoring 100 different metrics, the most probably we won't be able to make any conclusion what to do with this metric. So here is the place where close cooperation between AI, ML engineers, and subject uh, domain experts are crucial so that we can uh, properly understand what we are going to monitor and how we are going to react later on feedback. And uh, we will grab feedback and we would like to improve our models because, you know, world is changing and our models, which is perfectly fine now, in a few months, can be very bad and its accuracy will be very low, yes? So we need to monitor models drift and data drift, meaning that we are elastic and we can react properly on the changes which are tracked in the world by us. And again, is this solution a part, a standalone solution, or again, I need to have this integrated with uh, some other system? Again, here we have the risk of integration health, so we need to take this into consideration. And as a summary, uh, this is well thought out framework, which is based on numerous projects which we delivered. As you notice, this framework is tool agnostic, so you can implement this using open source models, you can use any cloud providers. The main, uh, the main thing is we need to ask proper question and not to omit any, uh, uh, anything. The biggest strength of this framework is that we split into smaller manageable parts and we can just better manage this. And the biggest strength of this approach is if we ask proper question, 
we maximize the chance to get the proper answer. Uh, and this leads to the situation that we guide our efforts effectively and we are maximizing the chance of success for our project. Thank you very much. And if you have questions, you know, it's time for lunch, so I doubt, but still, <laughs> I'm happy to hear. Are there any questions? Okay, I'm sure you're all keeping them for asking Rostislav while eating lunch. So enjoy uh, your meal. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Rostislav, very much. Uh, lunch break is until two, and I will see you all here at two p.m. <laughs>